Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to dig some holes and we're going to set concrete. I've got a new in-ground basketball goal that's going to replace this one with the broken base, and I've got a mailbox that keeps getting damaged or bent over, and I'm going to redo that. So, in the past when I did this, I normally just dug a hole, poured the concrete straight in. Today, I'm going to try to improve that process a little bit by using sauna tubes and see if we can do a little better job. With five kids and five grandkids, we definitely need a basketball goal. But this one, I set up as soon as we moved in and filled the base with water like the instructions say, but it tipped over anyway. So then I built something to hold the base down out of concrete blocks, four by fours and rebar. And as you can see here, that failed. The next thing I wanna talk about is what is a sono tube and why are we using them instead of the way I've done this in the past. So, Traditionally, if I wanted to put a post in the ground, I'd dig a hole and just pour concrete directly in that hole. You get this irregular shaped concrete ball, and a lot of times it'll be shaped like this. Unless you're using a post hole digger, your hole is gonna get wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. So you've got this pyramid, and the frost and thaw cycles can push that up and loosen it. The other thing about that, if it's a very large hole, you're gonna waste a ton of concrete on that wider top section. In the scenario of the basketball goal, they recommend that your concrete that fills around it is three foot deep and 16 inch diameter. I didn't find a three foot by 16, but I did find this 12 inch diameter, four foot deep. And I'm just gonna put a bunch of rebar in it and I think that's gonna do really well. What we are anchoring is this plate right here. And your pole for the basketball goal mounts on top of that. So, this will just slide in here once the concrete's filled. What this does is it gives you a cylinder, number one, that's gonna be less likely to, to heave and loosen up than that pyramid shape. The second thing, you're gonna use less concrete because it's gonna be in that exact shape and the third thing is you're kind of having a separation between the dirt and the concrete, which as the dirt mixes in the outside edge of that concrete, it's not as stable. The downside is, how do you dig a hole that size? I've got a post hole digger, but it doesn't have an auger anywhere near that big and I'm not gonna go get a new auger. So I'm gonna dig this hole with the backhoe and get this set in and fill back around it and try to still get it level and plumb. So the first thing I need to do is mark off exactly where I want this to be. So let's do that. Now we wanna get proper placement for the pole. And it's critical that that pole doesn't have any twists at all in it because that's gonna be magnified by a six foot wide backboard. And if it's crooked like this, That'll drive them crazy every time they play on it. So we really want to get this straight. But first thing is determining where to put the hole. Three pointers, 20 foot. I'm going to measure 22 foot from the house to where we want to put the goal so that they've got that full range. And then we're actually going to end up extending the driveway out so that they've got that on this end too. But let's take some measurements. I've painted a mark where we want it to be in this direction. Now, ideally, we'd like the, the uh, post to set as close to the concrete as possible so that the basket overhangs the concrete. But I've only got so much range to dig right up next to it, so we're basically gonna make the hole as close to that paint mark as we can in this direction.
The challenge here is that I want to make the hole deep, but I want to make it as narrow and short as possible because anything I dig out bigger than a 12 inch circle has to be filled back in. And after a few minutes of digging from this side, I realized I'd have a lot better luck digging from the other side if the goal is not to stretch that hole out. So I switched around to the other side and that did seem to work a lot better. This is the second basketball goal that I've concreted into the ground and I think I like the other design better where the entire pole sunk into the ground rather than just the mounting plate, but it's gonna work. I think the difference is that was easier to do as an amateur and I didn't even have a tractor or any kind of equipment. I just did the whole thing with a shovel and mixed the concrete in buckets. So it was more time consuming, but the product turned out just fine. That would have been my guess, about three feet, probably maybe a little less than three feet. But by turning the backhoe around the other way, I'm able to dig this. I could actually dig back under the concrete if I wanted to, but I'm going to be able to set this right against the concrete, which is better for the kids playing basketball. So we've got about another foot of digging. This is my first time using these sauna tubes, and I think it's a great product, especially if you're wanting to finish with a concrete pier sticking up above the ground. But like anything that you do for the first time, I made a couple mistakes and I learned a lot from this process. So hopefully I can save some of you guys that learning curve. It's like we've got about another six inches or so. Still trying to decide exactly how close I want that to be because if it's right up against it, I won't be able to fill in around it the way I want. It's probably gonna set out about eight to 10 inches, but almost there. Let's see where we're at now. Looks like the top of this cylinder is now about an inch and a half to two inches higher than the concrete of the driveway. And I think I feel pretty good about that in terms of if water comes off of the house in a rain and kind of puddles in this area right now, I'd rather have it be up against a concrete post that we've just set than pooling on top of the bolts that actually anchor the basketball goal to this concrete. So I think we're going to leave it sticking up a couple inches. Now my next challenge as I think about doing this is how do I fill in around this and still have it straight up and down because as soon as I put a scoop of dirt next to it it's going to try to fall. So I think what I'm going to do is drive my rebar into the ground where it's inside the walls of that and kind of holding it. That won't be super secure but it's going to help. And the next thing about this is the post has to be perfectly level which means the plate that anchors into this concrete has to be perfectly level. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the pillar has to be perfectly level. We're going to aim for that but it's not the most critical measurement on this. I've got this half inch by four foot long rebar. The way the shadows are, you're not really gonna be able to see me do this, but I'm gonna take these and stand them up on opposite sides of this tube and poke them in the ground. I'm gonna lift the tube off and drive them down further then put the tube back in place. Then I'm gonna start filling around the outside of this with dirt. And as I do that, I'm going to put the level on the side of the tube 
I'll have to pull that off once I actually start filling dirt, but for now, I can level this. So I've got three pieces of rebar, four foot long, drove about a foot into the ground. We'll slide this over it. Should pretty much hold it in place. Now, time to start backfilling around the tube and just keep an eye on it and go slow. So right now I've got this footage sped up pretty fast and it probably looks like I'm just throwing the dirt in there, but I was trying to do it kind of cautiously and dump the dirt at the edge of the hole and let it fall in on its own. But about two thirds of the way filling up this pipe, I got a little bit of aggressive packing the dirt in with the bucket and I bumped the tube and kind of made it egg shaped. It didn't really hurt anything in this application, but that's probably the biggest vulnerability I see with using these. And the way I did it is if you needed that tube to maintain its shape for a above ground pier. Pushing the dirt around this collapsed it a little bit on the sides, but that's not really going to hurt anything for what we're doing. When I've done this in the past, we stuck the pole in the ground and that gave you a big reference point, but we don't really have that using this plate. So we have to make sure that the front edge of this is completely square to the front of the driveway so that the basketball goal doesn't seem twisted. So seven inches from the concrete to the front of this plate. So I'm gonna mark at the far end of this corner and that corner of the concrete, come out seven inches, drive a piece of rebar in the ground. We're gonna run a string across that. And when we set this into the concrete, we're gonna make sure that the front edge of this is even with that string. And then we'll put a small level on it. We should have the ability to still tweak it a little bit. Since that partially collapsed that top of that tube, next time I do this, I'll just fill in around it at the bottom, then pour the concrete in it, then once the concrete sets, then finish filling in around it. That's probably smarter anyway. At the beginning, I said I was going to do a basketball goal and a mailbox, but I bought 10 bags of concrete and used nine of them on just setting up the basketball goal. So, the other one will have to be a project for another day. Each time we dump a bucket of concrete in there, we mix it up a little with this so that the batches are, are mixed together. Okay, now time to push our anchor in. Once I push that down into the wet concrete, 
I worked it back and forth a little bit to make sure that there weren't any voids around the anchor. And then I spent a good five minutes trying to get it perfectly level and perfectly square to our string. The process of doing that pushed a little bit of the concrete up around the nuts and the on top of the plate. So then I need to clean that off because that's the mounting surface for the actual basketball goal. Well, as far as the Sono tubes, I think those are pretty handy. Like anything else I do for the first time, I feel like I learned a couple things about how to actually get these placed in the ground properly. As far as the basketball goal, I really preferred the version I used before where you set the entire shaft a couple foot into the ground, the pole itself, and then you can put something longer across it to make sure you're squared up. But this is going to work. I think it's level and it's straight and should do a good job. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. In just a minute, you'll see links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.